welcome to Confessional Magazine. And today I'm so lucky to be here with the queen of her side, Jackie Siegel. Thank you so much for being here today, Jackie. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so happy to be here talking with you. <laughs> of course. So Jackie is about to be all over our TVs as a guest on Below Deck. So Jackie, how did you, how did you end up as a charter guest? You know, this is my second time. So I, I was on Below Deck with Captain Sandy, and then I get a call like six months or eight months later, and they asked me to be on it again. Because I think on, when I was on with Captain Sandy, I, I believe it's one of, the, one of their top rated and, and watched um, episodes. So, I mean, I said, yeah, I would love, yeah. to, I'd love to do it. You put know, me back on the water. <laughs> put me back, uh, you know, I, on this huge yacht. I mean, who doesn't want to do that, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so how did you how did you pick what friends you're taking with you? <laughs> well, originally I, w I had, um, see, my husband, he, he doesn't like going yachting. At least I didn't, because I, I wanted him to buy a yacht before. He says, no, I hate yachting. I hate yachting, you know. And, and we bought one for a day and he was bored. And then he returned it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> So, so anyways, the, when I w was with Captain Sandy, it was a, just a total girls trip and it was in the Mediterranean. We had a blast. So then, um, my husband, he watched the, the, uh, my episodes and I guess he really liked what he saw. <laughs> so then when he heard I was going to be out with Captain Lee, um, and, and, uh, he also heard Captain Lee had lost his son. And we mm -hmm. lost our daughter, Victoria, both to drug overdoses. Um, he says, I want to go. It's like, wow, okay, great. Um, so it changed the whole dynamics of the trip. So now it was going to be a girls yachting trip turned into a, a family trip because I brought my husband, I brought um, uh, two of my kids and uh, my stepson, his wife and um, two friends. So it was like a total different dynamic, which, which was great. I mean, I loved it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting too old to um, party too much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I got so, to take care of my skin. <laughs> <laughs> what was the difference from your experience? The, the difference was um, uh, about being uh, on Captain Sandy's boat. And well, it was obviously, obviously two different locations in the world <laughs> between the Mediterranean and Antigua. But I'll tell you, when I brought my husband, when we, uh, we flew our private jet, to Antigua, uh, my husband and, and our family. And when we met with the producer before we got on the boat, um, he kind of gave us a, like a little um, lecture of, of how it was going to be. And he says, "I there's no rules. You do what you want. It's a true charter. And just have fun. And he says, oh, but there is one rule. And, and he, and that one rule is don't say anything to Captain Lee, whatever you do, don't say anything about the loss of his son because it, back then it wasn't public yet. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. he was still grieving and, right. and all. Well, and, and so that's okay with just one rule. I mean, you could drink however much you want. I mean, anything's the limit. So we get on the boat, they show us our estate room. And before we even unpack, my husband says, you know, let's just go look around the boat. So we, I follow him. We walk out of the room. He sees a door. He opens the door. Okay. okay. And there's, it's the bridge. And Captain Lee is right there. Okay. My husband walks right over to him, shakes his hand and said, I'm so sorry about your loss. And it's like, and I'm thinking, oh my God, that's the one rule they said, please don't do. And, and the first thing, he broke it like in, in five minutes. It's like, honey. <laughs> but, but you know what? Uh, I think because, you know, my husband, you know, he, we lost our daughter. Um, I think that was probably the only, like, exception. Like, um, because he, uh, Captain Lee was so gracious. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, you saw a side of him that I don't think anyone ever saw before. And, um, and I think that it was just like, like the support, like, cause my husband's a sex, successful businessman, Captain Lee's successful. And, and in, in their minds, I don't think they think that something like this could 
happened to them like like mm -hmm. i don't know if internally if they have self-blame or anything but i think it was good for man to man um to for both of them mm -hmm. i mean I, to share their stories and and their mourning so i think they both came out like um hopefully you know emotionally like stronger and yeah and um and they they just talked the whole time i mean they they were like best buddies i mean it really changed the whole dynamics of things and uh and and to this day they're they're still friends i mean my husband just called captain lee a couple of days ago and it's almost a year later yeah so so it was just quite amazing yeah and so can, can you tell me about your daughter victoria i would love to know about her well victoria she was a free spirit she was one of those girls she was, when she was in middle school um she didn't want anyone to know that she came from money like she like i she would not allow me to go pick her up with a rolls royce or anything <laughs> we had to use like one of we have like uh, staff cars where the ones we use for grocery shopping and stuff we'd mm -hmm. always have to pick her up in one of those and if i if i did show up in a beautiful car she would like roll her eyes and like kind of point like <laughs> pick me up around the corner you know so i'd have to <laughs> do that and she was one of those girls she'd only wear flip flops modest. And, yeah and, and just you know, like a very earthy girl um like a hippie and she just wanted to fit in with um with everyone so um but then um mm -hmm. for her when, when the queen of versailles movie came out mm -hmm. all, all of a sudden she started like people are saying oh you're a rich girl you're a rich girl you know and uh and so people started being friends with her because of her money other people bullied her because she was rich and i mean she used to make her own t-shirts i mean like in tie-dyed t-shirts like she um yeah and and so as, as time went on you know they introduced her to drugs and they liked her because she was the one that could afford the drugs mm -hmm. and um and, you know it, eventually it took her life but uh um, but she did leave a diary, um, and the, oh, wow. the, yeah, and, and I published the diary. It's called Victoria's Voice. Um, wow, she, that's so she felt, special. She, yeah, the, the diary, um, it's really interesting because it started out before she even knew what a drug was from when she was 13 years old until she was 18 when she passed away. And you can see in her handwriting, it's a direct, scan, like a perfect scan from her diary like i didn't edit anything yeah um her handwriting you, you can see when she's sober you can see when she's high or uh, you know on drugs and um because <clears throat> yeah, of the handwriting changes the language changes and it's i mean like, there's a lot of swear words in there you know you know and, and the, the diary it, it, like says i'm too fat or not good enough and and it deals with like like the emotions that so many teenagers are going through mm -hmm. you know and um so I, I feel like it's it's probably good for teenagers um to real read it to know that they're not alone to feel they're not good enough and and some of that stuff uh, they need to know it's 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 a part of growing up because mm -hmm. there's always going to be bullies out there mm -hmm. i mean I, I i get bullied all the time i i get a bunch of people like you know if i if i post something like you know, I, I could post anything and some, there's always going to be someone that says something negative, mm -hmm. but most people say, say nice things, you know, in, in my, um, social media and stuff, um, which is the real queen of Versailles, by the way, <laughs> someone already took the plug. queen of Versailles. Someone took the <laughs> queen of Versailles. So I have to be the real queen of Versailles, <laughs> but at least that one wasn't taken yet. They should have thought quicker. I got it. <laughs> but, you win um, that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you <laughs> but um um yeah so in oh and i also uh, put a documentary i made my own documentary up for my cell phone and one of my friends um that uh uh had a camera her name is cinnamon and um her last name just i, I can't think right now but um it's called the princess of versailles which is about losing our daughter victoria and um and how we started our foundation and our battle on drug abuse in, in America here. So if, if you ever want to watch that, 
it, yeah. it's, it's kind of a tearjerker at the end and it's for free. It's on YouTube. I didn't make it to make money. I just did it to um, share with my audience um, part a section of my life. And um, yeah, so uh, uh, let, if you see it, like, let me know what you think of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this it's, first of all, I'm so sorry for your family's loss. Nobody, I mean, nobody expects, no, no. I mean, I'm not a parent, but I, I can only, I can't even imagine what that feeling must be to lose your child. So my heart is with you, but this is such a real thing and a real problem in well, America. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. We didn't know how, that the drug epidemic was so bad. In fact, when she passed away or prior to her passing away, uh, if uh, and this hits like everyone from, from the, the, the homeless people to people that are movie stars, the, the drug epidemic. And before Victoria passed away in general, if like, someone famous passed away or someone prestigious um, or even you know, at any level, they would say, like, if their, their kid died of, of a drug overdose, they would say, oh, our child died of natural causes, our child died of a heart attack. Well, you know what? In the back of my mind, what's causing the heart attack? What's, you know, like, they should be honest because by not being honest of what caused the heart attack, you don't know what not to do, you know, to mm -hmm. stay healthy. So, mm -hmm. so that's, um, oh, and, and, and when, when you did announce, or if, if they found out that your child died of a drug overdose, the stigma around your family was just like, no one wants to talk with you, to you. They're, you know, you're, you're kind of like, we, you know, we don't want to be around them. So the stigma was really bad. And, and um, when Victoria passed away, we were in the headlines, like the New York Post, like uh, they, they called it the, the doomed princess, or um, they were making fun of me. My And my husband doesn't even drink, but he carries around the styrofoam cup like like this, okay? Um, and, 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 but that's, he drinks green tea all day long. They were making fun, like on the news saying, look, at the, the father is getting sloshed, drinking... Um, uh, alcohol at his own daughter's funeral you know that they, they just make things up and 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 we were getting bullied by the press in that way and so we we kind of like just shut it off and we stayed silent for a few months and finally my husband says you know what we got to do something so the press was talking about the drug overdose anyways so we came out and we acknowledged yes our daughter did do drugs we didn't know she was doing them and we want to open other parents' eyes, mm -hmm. you know, um, to really get to know your child. What's happening behind that closed door? Or what are they doing when they're going to their friend's house? Mm -hmm. And in my book, it, it shows uh, like like a signs that we looked, that the other parents can look for that, that, that were, you know, we missed, you know, like, like changes of behavior. Um, their sleeping patterns, you know, if they're irritable or, you know, um, so, yeah, so, so when we came out and now since then, um, it's, everyone's coming out if their daughter or son or dies of a drug overdose, it's, it's, they realize they're only being helpful to other, other people about mm -hmm. the problem. And the mm -hmm. press finally came on board with the awareness of the, the opioid and heroin and fentanyl epidemic, mm -hmm. because that's been in the top of the news for the past four years, ever since, you know, we, we pursued that, you know, we made it like, it's okay. You know, you're, you don't, don't be shamed. I mean, it can happen to any, it's anyone. real. It can happen. Yeah. It can happen to literally any, anybody can make a wrong choice once and it can affect the rest of their lives. Yeah. And, and yeah, and I I produce um, the Mrs. Florida pageant, and I host Mrs. America. So um, Victoria's Voice, our foundation, is their platform, and every single person. Um, so we they like uh, they they go around speaking about mm -hmm. the drug epidemic, but each one is affected in some way by the drug epidemic, whether 
they're re in recovery themselves, mm -hmm. or maybe they were raised by a, a parent that, that was addicted mm -hmm. or used, or they know someone or, you know, and they all, each one has their own story. So, um, you know, I'm thinking maybe I'll do like a, I, I own um, America um, versus addiction, the, the TV channel that's on fire, yeah. fire stick yeah. on Amazon. Um, so I've got some stuff on there, but I'm thinking about doing a show about um, my beauty contestants and, and, um, and what they're doing with their crowns to help fight the d drug epidemic. Wow. That just, I mean, I just, that's I mean, incredible. And it, it's important. It's very important. The work that you're doing is important. And, you know, you're really, truly letting Victoria's voice live on and helping so many people. Mm -hmm. And that's such a beautiful thing that's needed right now. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we, we also brought out the, the Narcan. We got the Narcan in every state. So now it's, it's common for every police officer to have Narcan and admi mm -hmm. administer it. Because usually it's the police officers that are at the overdose um, uh, scene before the ambulance gets there, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And you only yeah. have a few minutes to save someone. So yeah. Really and I, I know that you can, you can access Narcan more easily now, which is so important because mm -hmm. I mean, I would, I would love to know how I can access it. In well, my they town. have it at the pharmacies, like if CVS really? or Walgreens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They sell it there and they sell it in packages of, of two. Um, but the problem is it's like, I think it's like $80. And the thing is, like anyone that does drugs, they'd rather use that money to get their fix or rather drugs. than, yeah, you know, than, than buy the Narcan, you know. Um, so that's like a little bit of a challenge there, but it's good for the parents to have, mm -hmm. you know. And we encourage parents to also lock lock their medicine cabinets, you know, because that's yeah. a big a big way for kids to um, get their hands on on you know prescriptions, you know, or they mm -hmm. or they like raiding grandma's cabinet. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's just, I mean, once you get into it, it's almost like you're not yourself anymore at that point, right? It's you are the drug yeah. that's taken well, over. You, you have no choice. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, addiction is a horrible thing. Yeah. And, um, oh, I'll tell you one thing though. Um, this is kind of changing the subject, but not really. Um, how with the um, below deck, when we left the country, America, uh, to go to Antigua for, for the mm -hmm. show. I mean, everything was normal and we had no clue that the COVID was coming in such like a, like a vengeance here right. in America. And, and like we, we were off the grid, basically. We didn't, we weren't in touch with the news or anything when we were on mm -hmm. the, the Below Deck show. The minute we landed in America, we landed on the private jet, we go through customs, they're handing us masks, they, they got sanitizer, and, and, and there was a mandate, we, they gave us the letter that you, uh, for the stay at home order, a mandated, you can own, no unnecessary yeah. travel. It's like, what the heck is going on? You know, it's <laughs> like, it was like scary. I didn't yeah. know, what, like, I felt like we were under attack, but I guess we're, we were under attack by COVID, by a microscopic organism. And I'll tell you one thing. Um, we were making great strides through our, our foundation mm -hmm. of, of, of reaching out to people and, and speaking. Like we've spoken at hundreds of schools and really been an inspiration. And we felt like we were making great strides. And now with COVID, um, with everyone like either mandated or recommended to be staying at home, isolated, mm -hmm. I think isolation is not a good thing two weeks may be okay but um, almost a year maybe not so good uh, people are getting depressed mm -hmm. and they're losing their jobs and um it's just been awful but what what happens in those situations i mean mental illness if someone's prone to that um really kicks in they don't have their love and support of mm -hmm. uh, you know being social like with their people that support them so much there there's almost i think the drug epidemic um well it's definitely gone up but i think the deaths have almost doubled 
um, since last year, since before COVID, yeah. from, from unnecessary deaths that could be totally preventable. It's and, sad. Mental health. Yeah. And mental health. I mean, it all ties in together. Depression, mental health, drugs. I mean, um, even bullying. Sometimes when people are bully, bullying, they're bullied into doing drugs or they do drugs because they're stressed out. You know, I mean, all this stuff ties in into together. And um, and I, I just met with the uh, uh, the sheriff Lima from Seminole County here in Florida, and we're we're putting a whole project together, uh, the educational videos that for, for it could be shown in schools or it, even if it's virtual, we yeah. can reach out to the kids that um, we're all here to um, you know love and support and and just to stay off drugs, you know. Yeah. So. And we plan on going nationwide um, with this. So, like, I've been working very hard. I'm not letting yeah. COVID hold me back from saving lives. I mean, that's my mission. Yeah. I just want to save lives right now, you know? Yeah. And I, I think um, you've got a great platform already for this. And just to be heard and to get Victoria's voice out there and to save as many young lives that don't need to head down this path, that people need to realize that there's more joy out there. I think that people have a hard time finding joy. They look for happiness instead of joy, and that's the problem. Oh, for sure. And then um, I have um, this thing that I do. Um, I have influencers that are part of the Victoria's Voice Foundation. And um, we, we um, and, they're, and they're in the, the, their peer group. They're like 16 years old. It's like, so that's the group we want to reach. Yeah. And I've taken them on trips like, to go like um, um, wakeboarding or on boating or jumping off of a big rock and and um, going like to top golf or go karting, just different things that they can show to uh, on their influencer um, platform, like to get high on life and not on drugs, to yeah. be an inspiration. And a lot of these kids are from inner city um, that are um, from broken homes and were on drugs and they're drug free and. They're just showing that it can be done, you know, and That's they have so millions. Great. So I think with my influencers, I have over 30 million followers um, with the, all my influencers combined of our peer group, like for, for the teenage group, which is amazing. You're and, changing so many lives. And we're doing all this during COVID. So yeah, can you imagine if we didn't have that? COVID, the COVID thing, but um, I just hope we can get that vaccine to everyone. So, and I hope it doesn't mutate, like so. It's not <laughs> the vaccine's not any good. But, yeah. I mean, I we, know we all just need to get back to work, right? <laughs> oh, exactly. And the human interaction, we miss it and we need it. As humans, we're, we're we weren't made to be in isolation. <laughs> no, we weren't. Yeah, you know, not at all. I mean, we're creatures of like we need human contact, you know, and yeah and stuff and um oh gosh oh i was gonna mention uh I've, so a lot of the people um that i meet like anywhere in the world they always ask me like how's the house coming yes me Is it this done ever yet? Since, <laughs> no no but i can uh, give you an update if you want yeah okay cool so I love it yeah so anyways um i've been trying to figure out exactly how to um share Versailles with the rest of the world. And I finally um, met some people that I think uh, it's like a perfect um, match. I, I can't say who it is, but, um, but I just want, I can say that we started filming the, the finishing of Versailles. So um, we just started construction again and uh, so right now we're, we're like before we've uh, like where we are now and then in a year from now uh I, it should be coming out at least for the first season yes and, uh, yeah <laughs> so this is so amazing and so many people like so within this little bubble that I'm in of like other people I'll talk to that are doing the same kind of thing as me like yeah. people want updates on this on this so it, this is so exciting <laughs> Yeah, because it made it look like um, um, that we were losing Versailles, you know, 
just right. because the bankers made us list it. But the thing is, the whole world, um, the, the the crash of 2008, the, the financial crisis, the whole world was like, you know, um, affected. So mm -hmm. it's not like someone wants to go shopping for $100 million houses at that time. Right. So no one, no one bought it. So we don't think anyone would, but the bankers wanted to try. So, you know, <laughs> they do what they want to do, you know, and, and, um, you know, they, my husband says, well, where do you, or, or the, my accountant asked the bankers, well, where do you expect them to live if they sell the house? And they said, oh, they can get an apartment, you know, me and my eight kids. I mean, they were, they, the bankers were not nice to us at all. Oh, at all. And my husband said, he's never going to be like, Oh, 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 anyone money again, because the person you owe the money away. to is in, like the one in control. I mean, they're your friends when you, they want your money and take out your loan. But like, yeah, that was, yeah, they're not actually so your many people. <laughs> no. And, and I remember driving down the streets at that time for sale signs and like, like everywhere, you know, every, so many people's houses were in foreclosure then because the banks called the loan. They don't realize mm -hmm what they signed and you know if the bank wants to call the, your loan at any time you have to come up with that cash instantly and it's and insane you, yeah <laughs> right like who's, who, it's not normal to have the cash you know for for the mortgage because most people you know if they had the cash they'd buy the house with cash exactly you know? otherwise you wouldn't <laughs> need the mortgage <laughs> right <laughs> exactly so it's like a cut 22 you know so, all right. So on Below Deck, which I'm so excited to see you and your family on, how is the food? I'm always so curious about, because food to me, hello, like that's part of the experience, right? So tell me about the food. <laughs> oh my goodness. The food was so amazing. So I fell in love with Rachel, the chef. Yes. I mean, she was that good. She made me happy. And I'm a very picky eater. I mean, if I, anyone saw me in Captain S Sandy show, I mean, I, I like sea urchin. I like caviar. I like, you know, all that exotic stuff and very gourmet, you know. Um, and my husband's like meat and potatoes. Uh -huh. And then and my teenage boys, um, of, of course, they have their own things that they like. So she pleased all of us. Wow. I mean, um, I spend a lot of time in the kitchen and my kids hate my cooking. They, they say, mom, we have a, I said, there's plenty of food, but it's like, there's nothing to eat mom. And then they, <laughs> they end up ordering Uber Eats, you know? Yeah. So, but Rachel, um, I had my assistant reach out to her uh, a couple months ago because I would love for her to, I loved her that much. The food was that spectacular that I want her to be our chef for Versailles. So I've already reached out. Um, she she um, sent my assistant an email back that uh, um, that uh, she's um, um, what do you call it? Oh, that she's on like a, either another charter or something right now. So she she says contact me after that. So I told Sherry, well, contact her. Did you hear back? So I says. You know, before someone else nabs her. Now yeah. I'm worried, like, well, after I broadcast this, someone else is going to call her up and take her from me. <laughs> you know? Rachel, don't don't go with anyone else. Don't you heard me. it here first, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fun. And I just feel like Rachel has such a great just personality of just. Oh, yeah. It's If, if it's here, it's coming out here in, like, the best way, though. <laughs> She's amazing and she's beautiful inside and out and she's from New Zealand and, 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 yeah, she was like giving me some tips of how to like cook uh, muffins without, with no butter or oil or anything, like how you can substitute other things that can kind of hold the um, stuff together, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. I always use applesauce in my muffins. <laughs> oh, wow. Instead of but egg. <laughs> Yeah, see, so that's the thing. So if you want to be totally vegan, see, yeah. I just, um, <laughs> I just learned something. <laughs> that's fantastic. So what were your theme nights? Because I know you typically get to pick your different like activities, or you know, your night with uh, Captain Lee, or you know, 
Did, what were your themes? Um, oh my gosh. I forget. That was like a year ago. I forgot <laughs> what my themes were, but I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Every single night, Captain Lee had dinner with us. He loved my husband that much. I mean, I think they, they just bonded so much yeah. all over their, their, you know, the, our, the, uh, both of our losses that, um, they made the most of it. And in fact, they, they were, they would talk so late at night that it's like, okay, honey, I'm going to bed. You guys have your, your uh, guys talk. And, and, they have a I, and I was, I was so happy for that. I mean, it was really special. Yeah. Um, now after I went to bed, uh, I don't know, uh, what everyone else did, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was pretty much of a tame, um, um, cruise. I think, I think it, because the subject matter was so serious, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of people are going to love to watch, watch it because, um, like right now, I know a lot, there's so many millions of people out there struggling, you know, and worried about their own kids, you know, mm -hmm. with what we, we both went through. So I, I have a feeling that they're going to get a lot of viewers, um, on, on this, these particular mm -hmm. episodes. Uh, I think it, it'll probably be people's, um, more more favorite and like things that maybe they'll record it and and show their kids like hey look yeah. at these these two people you know famous people lost lost their something we don't want this to happen to you you know and mm -hmm. um so i think um i think like you know piece by piece we just keep plugging away and 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 trying to make a difference and influence um people in a good way yeah you know to give people yeah. an, an inspiration and I think yeah, uh, you turned your tragedy into, you know, mm -hmm. something beautiful and not everyone that's gone through something like you have is able to yeah. make a difference. So it's just, you're touching a lot of people. Well, you know, and, and I heard that Captain Lee, uh, I'm, I'm not on Twitter, but um, I was talking to someone else. They said that he tweeted something about losing his son uh, from, uh, from the opioids and, um, all of a sudden, like thousands of people tweeted back on his tweet that they also lost their loved one, you know, mm -hmm. as well. And it's just, it's very sad. Uh, I mean, this is the first time in a, a American history, or I think in, in man history, or now we have to say his and her history, uh, you know. <laughs> Our I, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Our history our history, uh, humankind in history, that um, more grandparents are raising grandchildren in, in all of history. I mean, that says a lot right there. Yeah. We're losing an entire generation of, yeah. of people to this. I mean, I know that my best friend, um, his name's Brian Hansen, and he's a wonderful musician. And he's in a, he has a band and their keyboardist passed away of an overdose, maybe two years now. And it's just, you, it's like the music's not the same without Hank on the keyboard anymore. You know, the music's going yeah. on, the band's still there, but yeah. the music's never going to be the same without him. And it's just so sad that. Well, that's the thing. Like my husband says, we don't know if we're losing, like with each person that dies, that that person could have been a, a potential Mozart or Chopin. This this was Hank. Hank. Or another Michael Jackson. Hank could play oh. two pianos at the same time, not even looking, mm -hmm. double-handed piano, like incredible. And it's just like the, the magic that's lost is just heartbreaking well, and sad and but it's changeable for the future we can't go back but we can only try and you know get the word out there to as many people as possible yeah because when um when when you, you talk about that story i mean other people that that are addicted even secretly doing drugs they'll realize this is real i mean their next dose could kill them i mean obviously the he didn't intend to kill himself. He wasn't expecting to die that night. And, and if he could see the future, um, you know, he probably would have never, you know, just stopped he right there. He was so bright. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. 
Um, just recently, a few months ago, uh, one of the kids' uh, friends, he was um, engaged to be married, had a two-year-old child. Uh, they, the, he, their friend was um, 23. He died of a drug overdose. His fiance uh, was, my kids saw the fiance at the funeral. That night she did drugs and died. So now they have a two-year-old that has now lost both his parents. And I guess the grandparents are gonna have to figure it out, you know? And, and that's the people that knew about Victoria's death. So, I mean, I, but you know, they, everyone thinks it's not gonna happen to them, you mm -hmm. know? They think, oh, okay, just it's one last time or this or that, you know, but the drugs are, are also laced and mm -hmm. or their drug dealer might say you know this is um synthetic drugs sometimes synthetic or even worse my hairdresser um she has a 16 year old boy perfectly healthy well he um met uh, he, he liked marijuana he his drug dealer said here's like a vape pen it's synthetic marijuana it'll be safer for you he did it and it gave him permanent brain damage. All of a sudden, he couldn't um, function. The, 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 of course, the paramedics were called. And uh, my hairdresser started crying. And, and he, he's in an insane asylum for the rest of his life because of the brain damage. So she lost her son, not, not to death, but like to brain damage. Yeah. It's, so just... It, it's just from one hit. He just you know bought it and, it and that's crazy awful. and you're so right you you don't think it's ever gonna happen to you I mean that's the same thing you get into a car and drive drunk once you're like oh, I'll be fine yeah. I only live a mile yeah. from here and it's just you don't it's yeah. it's you're if you could look into the future and look back at yourself you would yeah. stop yourself before you make these choices and that's, that's the story that needs to get out there and I'm I'm so sorry that you have a Thank reason you. to be doing yes. this, but it's also a beautiful thing that you do. Well, you know, and I, I find, you know, it's also like with all the uh, turmoil in America and, you know, with people with different political beliefs and and, and the division and all, I, I feel like everyone knows someone or this, this affects everyone. And I feel like just as a person, it's like I put politics aside let's come together as a family. And I feel like it's a common area where no one can, you know, fight. Hi puppy. Like, yeah, this is my ear. I'll show you it, Zen. <laughs> this was Victoria's dog. Victoria Aww. rescued animals. And this, he's a mutt. Um, I love he only, him. Yeah, he only, um, Victoria used to volunteer at the um, um, animal shelter and she would go around and if she saw like a dog only had one le one day left to live till it was euthanized, you know, they have the little postcards yeah, on them. Yeah. Um, she would uh, adopt them. So we ended up with a bunch of dogs, but um, <laughs> um, some of my I friends. So, yeah. so yeah, he's a mutt. Not, not What's the, his name? You know, cutest, his name is Zen, but it's anything Hi. but Zen. Aren't you Zen? <laughs> That makes it even more fitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, so he, um, he, he gives me strength because since Victoria had so much love for him, I mean, I, I feel like she would have wanted me to take care of him. And um, just like, I feel like, you know, it's a part of her, you know, because they were, yeah. they, this was her favorite dog of all the rescue dogs. And he's also one of the ugliest dogs, aren't you? No, no, he's so ugly. He's cute. <laughs> cute. Exactly. He's got Good a boy. face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> right? I love it. I got to remember that one. <laughs> oh my God. Well, Jackie, is there anything else you want to tell us about your time on the yacht? Um, well, you know, I think uh, my, my boys had a blast. Um, and everyone says they're kind of like little heart throbs. So um, <laughs> some of the younger girls would probably like to watch them doing their yeah. flips off the boat. And they did all the water sports. And then um, I, my um, Steve and Janessa 
um, they're my stepson and his wife and, and she's glamorous and um, younger and, you know, they uh, are wine connoisseurs. So anyone that likes wine will probably appreciate the wine that they're drinking. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So um, really it's, it's, it's really um, was one of the most best fabulous experiences I've ever had in my life by, by, you know, except for like, you know, giving birth and having a family and stuff. It was really wonderful. And uh, yeah. it's so nice too that, cause you, you know, in the beginning you said that your husband wasn't even gonna go, wasn't even a fan. And now look at this beautiful, awesome relationship he has with Captain Lee. How cool is that? Like worth it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's why I say, honey, you, you, you gotta start, you know, doing things like that. Maybe we'd be, be Oh, sorry. Maybe we would meet more people if we owned our own yacht. I'll have to tell him that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, he, he's got this theory. He says the best thing is um, the best yacht is other people's yachts, you know, because <laughs> then you don't have all the work and the maintenance and all that. I can see that. You just need a, like a join a yacht club, but like don't get yeah. the yacht. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm just going to invite it on the yachts. I love your way of thinking. Okay. We can, we can share tips with each other. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, well, Jackie, it was such a pleasure to talk to you today. And I hope that we talk again. And I know me that too. you're going to get Victoria's voice out there and let me know how I can help in any way to just spread yeah. as much because I am. I'm on the same team with you that there needs to be a change in America and there's going to be a change. And the only way it can happen is spreading Victoria's voice to as many Thank people you. as possible. Yeah, and, and the Victoria's Voice Diary, um, her book is on Amazon. And, and don't forget the, the Princess of Versailles on YouTube. And then also next year, oh, my dogs are like <laughs> getting excited here because <laughs> I know I'm almost done. Um, they're rubbing up against my legs. So um, um Next year, when, when my show comes out for Versailles, like next January or something around there, um, look me up and we'll do another interview and Absolutely. I'll do something very special for you. Oh, thank you. I so appreciate that. And I just, I can't wait to see the show and just continue to watch your journey. And we'll see you on Below Deck on Monday. The Monday, right? The, the, on this the first. Monday, this uh, February Monday. 1st and um, Monday February 8th at 9 p.m. Yes, and we can't wait you and I can't wait to watch your journey, listen to your it, story and everybody go follow the real Queen of Versailles on Instagram and thank you so much, Jack. I'll talk you. to you soon. Okay, thanks. Thanks. You're the